Go. Ah! It's a scene you'll encounter in any happy family home around the world. Boys versus girls race. The race of a century. Go! Brothers taking great delight in outdoing their sisters. Okay, ready? Set, go. But in this family, there's a difference. The baby girl of the family, eight-year-old Jazz, was born a boy. At first I thought, oh, how cute. You know, he wants to play with a doll. Who cares? You know, we're really open-minded. But when it continued on month after month and it became year after year and it became stronger, I knew, you know, this wasn't a phase. It's getting more intense. Happy birthday. When Jazz's parents, Scott and Renee, had their fourth Happy child, very early they were bewildered by the way their new son was behaving. He's such a good boy. When a two-year-old comes up to you and says, Mommy, when is the good fairy going to come with her magic wand and change my penis into a vagina? You're like, OK, this is not typical. This is not something a normal child would do. Can you remember the first time you thought, I want to be a girl. When I was two, mm -hmm. I would say I want to wear a dress. I'd always say I want to play with the Barbies. <laughs> Barbie! Barbie! Right from a very early age, you thought that's what you wanted to be? Yeah. Let's go outside. She was quite adamant about what her belief was, that she was a girl. And initially, I know from my own perspective, I was in, in denial. Just a little bit more, there's some lumps. Mommy, I don't know what it is. In the freezer. Despite their reservations, Scott and Renee have made the courageous okay. decision to let their son live as a girl. Here's the sausages. And we're going to move this it to was the other one. difficult for us, but at the same time, we knew that that was the right thing for our child, whether society was going to accept it or not. You've got a beautiful dress on. Did you select this? Um, uh, it was with me and my mom. Yeah. Like, She's like, oh, how about you wear that dress? <laughs> but it's a nice dress. Thank you. So you love dressing up, clearly. Um, yes. Mm. And you love earrings. Yeah. <laughs> Hearts, beautiful. Yeah, with all pink dots in it. <laughs> Jazz is what's known as a transgender child. In her case, born a boy with normal male genitals, but an unmistakably female brain. Do you know that you're a special girl? Yes. And, and why is that? Because I have a girl brain and a boy body. And how do you feel about that? Um, I feel fine. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a normal life to me, pretty much. Because if people are, like, making fun of you, just walk away and be friends with people that are nice to you and appreciate you. Okay. Her bedroom is like what you would expect of any little girl, and her interests like most, except perhaps her passion for mermaids. Why do you love mermaids so much? Um, it's because I don't have to worry what's around, like, the private area. Okay, so yes, it's the, the mermaid could be anybody. Yeah. Okay. When I ask children to draw a picture of themselves draw a picture of what they like, and many, many trans children will draw mermaids. They have tails. They have no genitalia. They can be beautiful and pretty, and you can put sparkly things on them. Dr. Marilyn Volker is a therapist who specializes in sex and gender issues. What is gender identity disorder? How do, how do you explain that? It's literally where the biology between the legs does not match the gender identity between the ears. What color? Um, that color is... We wow. don't know how many transgender oh, yeah. children exist, but chances are there could be hundreds in Australia. This is a pretty color, Jazz. Around the world, yeah. gender identity disorder is becoming more recognized. I always knew it, you know, when I was a little kid, I was always wanting pink dresses, Barbie, everything. So, um, you know, I've never really lived as a boy. I've always wanted to live as a girl, so I really knew exactly who I was. Uh,
even in, in Germany school, last year, 16-year-old Kim Petraz, who was born a boy, became the youngest person ever to have sex change surgery. I got the rule band uh, because I um, saw I had so many psychologists in the end who said that from more two years would be not be good for me to wait for the surgery. Kim was born Tim. Like many transgender children, Kim began taking hormones at the age of 12 to ward off the cruel effects of puberty. Uh, every day I woke up and I was scared to have a lower voice or suddenly have a beard or anything, Adam's apple or something. So um, I was really um, so happy when I got the hormones and that's what I've always wanted to feel like. The experts say that for these children, the sooner they begin the transition, the better. What are you wearing? In Jazz's case, that happened at an extraordinarily young age. And what struck you about jazz? Uh, first of all, an extraordinary spirit. You're already ready for bed, look at you! When Dr. Volker first saw jazz, she was just three. We use pictures and anatomical dolls. Jazz looked at the penis and scrotum, looked at the vagina and said, when I'm thick, the good fairy is going to bring me a vagina. And I don't look at a child and say, oh, transgender. I ask them why they would want a vagina. And what did Jazz say? Because I'm a girl. How about this one? You like that one? Yes. At three, Jazz was probably the youngest ever child to be diagnosed as transgender. And you don't mind that you have the, the girl brain and the boy body? Yeah, I don't care. I still like live the life like a girl. It's not any different. What do you like about being a girl? Um, like it's fun. You get to do a, like makeovers. <laughs> How about this one? Yeah. There must have been a point at where you were resisting almost, trying to change what Jazz was doing. Yeah, and I thought if it is a passing phase, it will pass. Scott was a little bit more resistant. He was, you know, at first, like, was not as cool about it. Well, I guess I'd mo most dads would probably find this difficult. Yeah, it, it was difficult. I wanted to try and have Jazz do more things that were uh, intuitively boy. Are you going to make a nice nose for me, honey? He does wonderful noses. Do you remember what it was like when you were a little boy at all? I remember that no one knew that I had a girl brain. I remember that I was not happy with the clothes I had to wear and with short hair. Hey, your first hairstyle. You look so handsome. And when I was two, I re when I was a little boy, I remember my parents changed my overalls to like a little dress. Mm. Do you remember how you felt when you were allowed to wear a dress? I was very happy, like right now. Yeah. At first, Jazz's preschool wouldn't let her dress as a girl. At one dance recital, she wasn't allowed to wear a tutu like the rest of the girls and was heartbroken. What's your tongue in? For her parents, it was a turning point. Do you recall the day that you, you as parents had to sit down and say, OK, our boy from this day on is going to be a girl? Uh, by the time she was in her last year of preschool, it became very obvious that we weren't going to be able to keep this under the rug much longer. Happy birthday. It was the fifth birthday party where she was allowed to wear a girl bathing suit and we had, I don't know, 60, 70 kids here and they all saw her, who was known as him at the time, in this girl bathing suit. <laughs> it was really her coming out where she said to the world, I'm a girl. Come on, Jazz. My daddy, my only daddy. From those early years, Jazz was never happy unless she was treated as a girl. You want your ears pierced? Yeah. Who needs a drink? Me. What would you like? And her twin brothers and older sister are very accepting and understanding that they now have a sister. All right, can you give me some? 
it, I'm happy that she's a girl because that's what she wants to be. Are you protective of Jess? Yes, definitely. Because I've seen movies where people like her have been in like very bad situations and they've been like hurt and I don't want that to happen to her. And if they were to, if somebody said something unkind to Jazz, what would you say? I'd tell them just don't talk about that stuff and it's hers to know about, not theirs. Mm. Because they want to live their own life just like everybody else does. And they're the same kind of people as you are. They live the same kind of life. Unless you make it hard on them. Mm. For a transgender child and their families, life throws up some serious and complicated issues. Jazz has not yet had hormone treatment or gender reassignment surgery. Those decisions are all ahead of her. She's got a rough road ahead of her, there's no doubt. And, you know, I know there's a lot of pain around the corner and puberty is still looming out there and uh, she's still little which is great but I know you know eventually the, her body will betray her. Yeah right. we've tried to build as much self-esteem as possible going into those future years where we know it, it could be difficult. What do you think you'd like to be when you grow up? Um, a soccer player, an actor, singer and dancer. Uh, I like to draw too so maybe an artist a lot of things. Call this one for me. I think that was giving you purple today. These okay, are sweet. loving and courageous Jerry parents and doing what they believe yeah. is best for their child in a country that is still deeply conservative at heart. I get some terrible emails. Um, people that basically say that I am the worst parent. I am evil. I should be killed. My child should be killed type of parent am I and your kid's a freak. And, and we feel like if you, you know, by allowing you into our home, into our lives and, and essentially the world into our lives and seeing Jazz in her environment doing the things that she does on a daily basis, it'll open people's hearts and understanding and it could make the world a better place. We want to touch down where, where, we want to touch down over there. Smile. It is a complicated and difficult issue. But for Jazz, it's very simple. What is your message to other children who might feel trapped in the wrong body? Um, I would say don't be afraid. Just go tell their parents and then you'll be happy. Like, you'll like who you are after that. So you have to be true to yourself to be happy. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.